All right, guys, we've bootstrapped the APIC. So now what we want to do is we want to look at the topology again. So in this instance, remember we had spine one, leaf one, and leaf two. Now, I illustrated the fact that we are connected like so. And right now I'm just going to draw one leg to that APIC. Remember, we call this APIC1. And what we have to understand is that the system is going to dynamically discover all of the switches. So remember I did that ACI diag command where we looked at the, uh, the node vector read output. Well, what happened was is the APIC actually sent an LLDP discovery. So LLDP is a link local discovery protocol. It's an industry standard protocol. And what it did is it actually discovered this leaf. Now we saw that based on the output that we saw of that show node vector read command. And what we need to do is in order to use this switch, we first of all need to give it a node number and we need to give it a name. Now the moment that we do that, we'll give it we'll actually give it a node number of 101 and we'll give it a node name of leaf 1. Now, once we discover that switch, once that has actually transpired and we've gone through that discovery process and we've actually made this switch part of the management infrastructure for the APIC, what will end up happening is, is the APIC is then going to in turn tell this leaf to go ahead and send out an L, a second LLDP message and discover the spine. In fact, if I had multiple links to multiple spines, I would actually discover all of my spines, at which time I would need to also define parameters for each of the spines that I discovered and then ultimately this process is going to repeat until such time that I actually have the capacity of being able to identify and configure all of the devices that are in my fabric. So when we go through and we look at this implementation, basically at the end of the day all I'm going to be doing is modifying and assigning the value. So for the spine I'm going to use 201 as its name, we'll call it spine one. When I go over here it'll be 102 for the node number and it will be leaf 2. And at which time all of these devices will then be managed from the APIC either from the graphical user interface either from the command line interface or from any exposed API that's going to be application <clears throat> Uh, programmable interface functionality that I have that I'm going to actually uh, also address later on in this class. But the thing that we need to understand is, is that this LLDP discovery is actually part of one process. So between my APIC and any switch that I discover, so in this instance let's just say this is between APIC1 and what is ultimately going to become leaf one. So this is going to be switch ID 101. Well, the first thing that we need to understand is, is I'm going to run a protocol for that discovery process. That protocol is going to become or known as LLDP, Link Layer Discovery Protocol. We already covered that. But the moment that I discover this device, there are some things that I absolutely need to be able to sign. Remember we mentioned or I brought up the idea of the VTEP. Every device in my infrastructure has to have a VTEP, a VXLAN tunneling endpoint. And that VTEP is going to come in the form of a host route. In fact, you'll remember we created that TEP pool when I built the, let me go ahead and make that look better. Remember we built that TEP pool? And that TEP pool was 10.0.0.0 .0 .0 .0 
and it was slash 16. Well, that tet pool is an IP address range. And what we also need to understand is, is that we have the APIC is also going to be servicing the role of a DHCP server, Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol server, which means we are going to, between the APIC and the switch, we are going to exchange the ordinarily understood DHCP configuration. So in other words, there's going to be DORA is going to go on. There's going to be a discovery. So there's going to be, well, I'll just go ahead and say DHCP discovery. So DHCP discovery. Then there's going to be a DHCP offer. Then there's going to obviously be the request. And obviously, we need to be able to send that acknowledgement. So that's going to be what we call DORA, the discover, the offer, discovery, the offer, the request, and the acknowledgement. So that's the normal process that takes place. So right now, if I were to come in here and illustrate that cloud, whereby all of these devices are functioning and operating as part of a distributed node fabric, what ends up happening is we've already talked about some protocols that we have known for years. The first protocol is DHCP. Actually, the first protocol was LLDP, but I'll just list them in different sequences. LLDP, Link Layer Discovery Protocol. Now, other protocols that we're going to have to also, or some things that we're going to need to know about, one of them is going to be kind of new to us. So the next protocol, or the next thing I want to discuss, is not the new one. In fact, this one we've known for you know, years and years and years, and that's going to be the fact that this switch is going to need to learn characteristics associated to the fabric from the APIC. And what we're going to find is, is we're actually going to exchange a series of HTTP messages between these devices that are going to allow me to be able to execute gets. As an example, I, I'm going to need my boot file. So if there's a boot file that's already configured, the switch is going to need to learn that information. And obviously, I'm going to be looking for the 200 message, which is going to basically say that get, that get was OK. And this is going to be a bidirectional exchange. And if I need to, it's also going to be important to note that I may actually need to be able to, again, operate using another HTTP get message, which means I may need to actually upload my firmware. So I may actually need to be able to pull that. So obviously there's going to be the firmware response and everything along those lines. But once all of this is done, the new element that we also need to make certain that we embrace and understand is going to be something called the IFM. Now the IFM is going to be used for what we refer to as our policy enforcement. Now, later on, we're going to be creating policies. So, for instance, I may make an interface policy. So, let's say I have an interface policy that turns CDP on. Well, it's going to be the policy enforcement mechanism that's tied to the intrafabric messaging service that's going to actually deploy this policy as far as uh, being able to do the implementation and the configuration. Uh, if you're really interested in seeing any of these or learning any more about any of these values, and we start looking at the policy element communication, just keep in mind that the majority of this is TCP. When it comes to the HTTP uh, sessions, the HTTP sessions that I'm describing here are actually using um, HTTP GET, like I described before, but that get is actually going out on port 7777. So that's relatively important for us to be able to look at configuration. Now, um, you know what? I, I misspoke here. Policy enforcement is not handled by the IFM. It's going to be the IFM that is going to allow me to be able to exchange. So it's going to be policy exchange. So devices are going to exchange information about policies via the IFM. I'm sorry, I misspoke. That was not actually 
uh, an accurate way of describing what's happening. But the thing that we have to understand is in this IS, in, inside of this IFM, so in the uh, definition or in the description of the interfabric messaging, we have to understand that we use SSL. So we have an actual SSL certificate, and that SSL certificate is actually dictated by CMCA, and that stands for the Cisco Manufacturing Certificate Authority. It's a 124-bit SSL certificate that we employ, and it is tied directly to NTP, because if your NTP value falls either outside the bottom end or past the top end of this certificate, what ends up happening is, is your devices will not go active. And it is not until such time that the IFM actually comes up and has connected and actually exchanged the policy elements that will actually be able to manage a given device. So what we've described here is relatively interesting because when we look at this mechanism we're looking at fabric self-assembly so the first step that we implemented was to basically bootstrap the APIC which we already did so I bootstrapped the APIC now what I want to do is I want to manage expectation here I want to talk about what it is we're going to do before we do it and we already know that the moment that we did the APIC, we actually bootstrapped the APIC, we know that we sent out that first LLDP discovery. That, L, that LLDP discovery is going to be how I identify or find my very next switch. And then what I need to do is I need to actually configure that switch whereby I'm assigning the node name and the node number that I'm implementing. And what we're going to find is, is that the moment that we do that, so the moment that we do the baseline configuration, so once I've satisfied the requirement for the node number and the node name, what's going to happen is, is the APIC is going to issue the VTEP address. And that VTEP address is going to be a slash 32 host route that comes out of the TEP range that we defined. It's also very interesting to note that it's actually going to be assigned to the loopback zero interface of the switch itself, so of the 9K. And then what will end up happening is, is these interfaces right here will be sub-interfaces that connect these devices together. And these are going to be using the IP unnumbered format. So we're going to source all of our communication between spines and leaves and between VTEPs using this notion of the VTEP. But just keep in mind that address is going to be actually physically assigned to the loopback zero interface. So we see here the fabric basically has the capability of being able to discover every aspect of it. And then what's going to end up happening here is we are going to ultimately be able to do this for their first at least the one leaf then from there we're going to discover all spines and obviously from the spines we're going to be able to resolve all leaves so we can see this process is actually pretty um, tightly configured with regard to the way that it operates so like I said step one the Cisco APIC is going to be actually be configured. We're going to use the APIC to give it to name the fabric, define the TEP address range, any of the other requirements that we already went through. Then what's going to happen is, is that we're going to go through this, L, this LLDP discovery. And what will end up happening is, is that we're going to issue the TEP address and we're going to receive all of the boot information. And that's all going to be discovered via DHCP. So there's nothing new there. We're also going to use DHCP to uh, be able to issue the boot files to the other spines and the other leaves. So this is going to be repeated on a device by device basis. Then what we're going to find is, is that all nodes that are part of the same APIC cluster are going to actually 
be able to intercommunicate with each other and they're going to exchange information about their policy via the IFM. The moment the IFM goes live, what we'll find is, is a switch will actually be added to the APIC for the purposes of control. And then what this does is this basically at the end of the day allows me to be able to find my, th my fabric or discover everything with regard to the um, configuration and use something called a V. You'll hear this term, you'll see it in a lot of the books that you set, have set up. And the AV implementation here is basically what we call the appliance vector. So what is a vector? Well, a vector is going to be a direction. And remember, what's going to end up happening is, is that we're going to look at each of these components and we're going to identify them via these constructs that we just put in. So I'm going to identify devices or nodes via its node number. I can identify devices via the node name. It's also important to understand that I'm also going to be able to identify nodes via the VTEP address because those VTEP addresses are going to be unique. So as we go through what I want to do now is I want to return to the desktop and what I want to do is I want to walk through this process whereby we go ahead and we bootstrap this entire fabric and then what we're going to be able to do is we're going to be able to do some of the additional primary configurations. So I want to look at that in the next demonstration. I'll see you guys there.